Please welcome AWS Director of Solutions Architecture, Matt Janchishen, and Red Hat OpenShift Ecosystem Technical Director, Chris Morgan. Wow, we just heard Andy Jassy and Jim Whitehurst talk about that Red Hat and Amazon are going to work closer together around making RHEL and OpenShift better. And he also talked about something that we want to show you today called service brokers. Now, what we also want to do to do this is actually show you a live demo. You know, nothing, um, no magic here or anything like that. And to help us do this, I'd also like to introduce Steve Pusty, who's our lead OpenShift evangelist. <laughs> Now, I'm fortunate enough to, uh, in my nine years at Red Hat, to have spent seven of those years actually working with Amazon as part of the partnership. And, and I got to say, I'm, I'm super excited about the things we're doing. And, and Matt, kind of with that, you know, what are you excited about? Could you share with the, the folks here? Yeah, thanks, Chris. So I feel really privileged to lead a global team of solutions architects at AWS. And really every day we hear from customers about how they want to the capabilities and the stability of Red Hat solutions and, and how they want to use them in the cloud. And so you know, I'm really excited about the announcement that we made about the uh, tight integration of our product uh, development and, and release cycles around Red Hat Enterprise Linux. I've been with AWS, though, about five years. And what I find really interesting is how we've seen the shift to containers. You know, Customers want to use containers to deploy their applications to the cloud. We're also hearing from a lot of customers that they want easier ways to deploy hybrid workloads. And so it's really for those two reasons that I'm particularly excited about what we've announced between AWS and, and OpenShift. You, you know, no question. And, and we hear it ourselves. In fact, for me, the most exciting thing is this isn't something we just decided to do as two companies. It's the customer-driven aspect that's driving this that is really a key part of what we're doing. But you know, kind of maybe enough of us talking. Uh, Steve, is the demo ready? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Awesome. So, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time on stage, it is my privilege to share with you all the new OpenShift services interface with native AWS integration. Now, as we've evolved over the last several years with OpenShift, we've come to understand more about what customers want to do when they want to create their, their actual applications. They want to get to work immediately, creating their projects and going straight to the services that they want to use. And this includes also adding their own Amazon Web Services to their project. Now, as you'll notice, this new interface is actually empowering the developer to get to work immediately. Much like we saw yesterday with OpenShift IO with its onboarding capabilities, we're doing the same thing within the core platform itself with this new services interface. Now, Steve and team have created a sample Python application that's going to show us where the North America attendees reside next to the major airports based on zip code. Now, Apologies to the other 69 countries in attendance, uh, but uh, Jim and Andy didn't actually give us a lot of time to get a demo up for you. But what I want you to really notice is the simplicity, right? Steve was able to select Python, give it an app name, and then actually point to the source code that he wanted to put into this particular container. Now, we also want to do this with a stateful application. So we're going to need a database. Now, under normal circumstances, we would deploy that database as a service within OpenShift. But since my buddy Matt came all the way here to actually present with us, we decided that we would actually deploy an AWS RDS database in order to handle this. But uh, it looks like our build's finished. Let's uh, take a look at the application first. There we go. So, so Steve, it's great that we uh, deployed an application with OpenShift. I, I love the map. but. Uh, there's something missing. <laughs> and we were talking about the database. Could we add some data to this map? Well, well, yeah. I mean, Steve, would you mind maybe fixing it and, and actually getting us an RDS database for this? OK, great. So looks like what Steve is doing now is actually provisioning an AWS service the same way that he provisioned the native Python application that we saw before. Yeah, I mean, he, he really is. I mean. One of the big things when we uh, were working on this alliance and what we wanted to do is no matter where OpenShift is running, whether you're running it on your laptop, in your own data center, using one of our services, or running it yourself in a public cloud, if you can see Amazon Web Services from OpenShift, we expected you to be able to use Amazon Web Services with OpenShift. And uh, you know, 
again, we want to prove to you that this is actually a live demo. And so, as you can see, Steve has actually gone to the Amazon RDS console. And, and we have a, a new RDS instance being created that we just provisioned within OpenShift. Now, for the sake of time, uh, so you guys can get to your, your sessions today, we've already created a database that we're actually going to use to do the next step. And so, Steve, if we could go back to the OpenShift console. So this is so cool. It's so exciting to see OpenShift provisioning AWS yeah, services. It's and really cool. You know, so now that we've had this database provisioned in AWS, how do you actually associate that Amazon RDS database with your application in OpenShift? Well, so a key component of the service broker integration is this concept called binding. Now, all binding really is is linking services together without having to have intimate knowledge of how that service you're linking works if you're a developer. And so to do this, you, know, you simply select the service and then choose which application or other service that you want to bind to. And now OpenShift will then automatically detect a configuration change and then redeploy and rebuild, if necessary, the actual affected services and make them available. In fact, it looks like we've, we've done that now. So it's really great to see Amazon RDS deployed with OpenShift, whether you're running OpenShift on AWS or yeah. OpenShift in a hybrid capacity. Yeah. You know, I'm excited also to use additional AWS services like Amazon Redshift, Amazon S3, AWS Lambda. I mean, we're really just getting started. So. Yeah, I mean, it, it's no question. We're going to continue to add the number of services we have. Um, and it looks like our application is available. So Steve, do we actually have data now? There we go. All right. That's very cool. So I'm based in New York City. Uh, let's zoom in here and see how many attendees we have from uh, where I come from. Uh, it looks like a, a good mess of attendees yeah, we have like a lot. here in New York City. Um, in fact, is that, is that your place next to LaGuardia? Pretty close. Uh, you know, so true story. A lot of folks don't realize this. With my particular accent, it happens to me all the time. Folks feel like that I'm a native New Yorker. And <laughs> honest to God, I promise y'all. Uh, and, and, and they are so, so surprised to find out that I'm actually from right here in Boston. All right, all right. <laughs> well, I'm shocked. And, and you know, people actually in New York are shocked to know that I'm actually from Toronto. So I just wanted to let those of you from Boston know that don't worry, I'm not a Yankees fan. I'm a Jays fan, so we're all good. But more importantly, <laughs> more importantly, Chris, it, it's so cool to see this native integration and to be able to deploy Amazon AWS services from within OpenShift. You know, it, it really makes me excited about what we can do together going forward. Same here, Matt. You know, and, and thank you for being here with us. And Steve, thank you for driving it. Uh, uh, you know, AWS has been a trusted platform for us to run OpenShift for several years. But what I hope you noticed today, and you even noticed yesterday when you start to look at our OpenShift I.O. as part of this as well, is that as a developer, I was able to pull in a service for a relational database. And, and then that database is managed by Amazon, you know, for the high availability and other pieces. And we access that as if it was running within OpenShift itself in a very repeatable fashion. And we can do that from any OpenShift deployment that can actually see the Amazon Web Service. This is the incredible power we have of uh, hybrid cloud. And so kind of with that, we uh, thank you all for joining us today. And uh, I'll please enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. Thank you.